Okay, welcome to this report. Um, now, um, I've got this one from my blog on European News Weekly, um, the fifth estate, and uh, I did a report for Nuclear Hot Seat, uh, which is on the is a radio podcast uh, based in the US, and I do a weekly report there. Now, of course, one of the big issues uh, that you're seeing on the internet, uh, it's uh, been covered by a lot of alternative uh, blogs and what have you, we're looking at the issue of the radiation spikes that were uh, reported in January. Uh, well, they, were, they happened in January, but they got reported in February. And I just wanted to expand, because I only get five minutes on the nuclear hot seat uh, to actually explain what was going on. Now, the actual releases in January, that was one big plume of iodine-131, uh, which comes from uh, either criticalities, nuclear explosions, or medical sources. So, uh, so a reactor that makes medical isotopes uh, for cancer treatment and, and other things as well. So, what we saw was that the iodine-131 release uh, that was reported in January uh, by a French uh, uh, sort of NGO or a French uh, organisation and they basically turned around and they, I'll just take us to that right now right, so this is the picture that you'll probably be seeing on the internet and I just, first I think I'm going to zoom in on the source, okay um, we're looking at Poland had uh, 5.92 plus or minus, you know, and I think that's actually uh, micro uh, becquerels per per. Um, actually, I don't know what the re reading is on this one. It doesn't actually say, but bottom line is when you're looking at it, uh, it's a very, it's quite a low amount, okay, which was measured in the air, and we were looking at. Um, uh, as we got further away up into Norway we were getting much lower 0 0.5 0 0.27 and then the south 0 0.3 so as you see as you go further south you start to see higher values for this iodine 131 now if we go out to Spain we get 1.28 okay and then when we come into France we're getting much lower values um, sort of you know, a tenth of that value and then when we're coming further sort of to the west we're looking at 0.45 uh, sorry to the east we're going 0.45 uh, it's kind of measured in southern Germany but these are the mountains these are the Alps all around here okay and what you'll see is if the iodine is released into the air wherever it rains you'll get a hot spot okay so as we move further, we're getting 5.92. The highest value was measured in Poland. Now, there's no measurement in the Hung Hungary, Czech, um, Ukraine, Belarus. Uh, and these, these all have working monitoring systems. And we have something called URDEP. I'm just going to take you there. So, URDEP. Uh, we'll go there. Right, let's pop that up. You have to click accept on this one. Oh, should I centre this up? Yeah, I think I will. Uh, so we'll go on to your depth radiation monitoring. And if I just pull the screen back a little bit, you'll notice that uh, Ukraine still is switched off. Okay. Um, so what we're looking at really is uh, you know certain ones in Sweden are switched off at the moment Portugal is switched off uh, that's down there Portugal is switched off now there's there's been various releases recently okay and when I take you there I'll just show you this now up here they've got one day so what I'm going to do now the other thing I should point out very quickly is that this is Belarus here and you see that high spot there that purple spot if I was to click on it, uh, you'll see it's a much higher value, right? Well, actually, I won't click on it yet. It's, uh, it's not such an interesting thing, but it's more than uh, point, uh, it's 400 nanosieverts, so it'd be 0.4 microsieverts. It's a very high value, but that's that is you know by the Chernobyl uh, contaminated area. 
Um, so and then just, just south of that, you'll find uh, sort of around there somewhere is the Chernobyl power plant in in Ukraine. All right. Now, obviously, you'll also notice that the Russian monitors are all switched off. They're all switched off as well, and that's today. Okay. So now, what I'm doing, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click on one month. All right. I'm also going to go below here. I want to click on maximum value. Okay. I'm going to leave it on T gamma because I happen to know they're not allowing any other isotopes to be uh, tracked. You can get them when it's good, but when it's bad, they turn the other isotope option off. I'm going to pull this back a little bit, and you can see uh, you'll be able to see where all the monitors are all across Europe. Okay, and now now you can see the map as it should be working, where all the mon all the actual monitors are connected up to the Eurodep system. It's quite extensive. It goes straight into Russia. Uh, we've got Finland, Sweden. You know, Finland has uh, got a good uh, amount of uh, monitors. They're they're very efficient, and Russia. And you'll notice there's lots of spikes, um, and what have you. So they're all over the place. Uh, now th this one here, for instance, would be a uh, would be a reactor. We'll go to it. We'll click on it, and uh, we'll just show you the uh, the level of spike. Oh, hang on, I hit the wrong one there. I'll have to zoom in a bit more. They've uh, they've got there'll be two of these actually. Oh, there's three. All right, let's pick one. All right, hopefully this one should come up okay. And uh, this is because. All right, we've got up to uh, 6,400 nanosieverts, and to convert that into microsieverts, we're going to go one, two, and uh, and then basically we've got uh, what's it? I think it's 6.4, uh, 6.4 microsieverts peak. And if I click polyline, oh, hang on a minute. There you go. Sorry. Uh, pick polyline. You can see that there's this. All right, so. 800 is uh, 0.8 microsieverts, okay, and uh, well, we're nearly up at so, so it's nearly about six microsieverts. It's a peak, it's a very short peak, <clears throat> I think it lasts for about an hour, and it's because this uh, reactor is off gassing its gases, it's doing a refuel, and um, it's likely to have bits of cesium, iodine, and all sorts in it. Um, if we were to pull this one back, uh, they obviously had another one uh, within a, a week. So we go to two days. I know, try. I'll have to do a week. There's some missing data. You'll see there's some missing data here on February the 20th uh, to the 21st. So, and uh, so basically what we're saying here, and I would say on February the 22nd, which is this morning, they've switched off again. Now, this is quite normal uh, when there's a radiation release or expected radiation release from a nuclear power station uh, because they don't really want those spikes popping up all over the place. Uh, they tend to take them off and they, you know, uh, under orders of the International Atomic Energy, Energy Agency, who run the German server for this particular one. There's another one in Italy as well. Uh, but the German one can switch off these monitors, so people like me can't find them. Um, if we were to go here, uh, well, I mean, basically, what would, yeah, let's, let's have a look at this one. So we've got another purple spot, if you like, and uh, this is Hungary. So this is the area which I'd be concerned about. You'll see there's a gap there again. All right, now that's showing that there is, and I'm going to hit polyline, so because that normally show any, yeah, we've just got a line there, if you see, uh, on February the 5th, that's, you know, after January, so on February the 5th, um, and that's basically because they wanted to hide the big spike that you saw in Germany there, and there's another little break there, and there's another little break there, and another break there, so over the last couple of weeks, there's been some issues. I'm going to go back a month. Now going back a month once again, we're not seeing any, there's, there's data missing there, we've got a little blip there, 
there's data missing there and we're, we're that's the January period where basically we're, we're looking at um, a, a release a big release over some hours um, which could have been that little gap there and there are there is a little tiny gap there as well and uh, I suppose if we zoomed in we'd see I think it looks like another little gap there but the bottom line is is that around about the 4th or 5th of January there was some issues um, but what we're saying here is that Hungary are very good at hiding these large peaks now this peak could have been you know it could have been 20 100 millisieverts microsieverts could have been anything at all um, and <clears throat> most importantly is what isotope was it was it radon uh, that you get from uh, doing refuels with some iodine some cesium or was it mostly uh, iodine with different iodines now going back to the map I want to tell you something the IAEA their server here they have access to much more details and if I bring you over here you'd get an idea of the type of nuclides they're able to access and if you look at this list here it's a very extensive list it goes uranium thorium gamma T beta uh, these are all types of energy um, and of course we've got the specific isotopes PB214 PB210 uh, let's have a look and see if these are working sometimes they don't they don't uh, hide these so much so I've just clicked it it's refreshing and okay so we're getting the Germany is actually showing some peaks and let's go to that <clears throat> now if it was the Hungary one we'd expect to see peaks of iodine okay uh, now this is in becquerels per meter cubed okay so we're getting up to a normal amount might be a very low amount would be you know sort of one or two or three becquerels It'd be down the bottom here somewhere and uh, if you can see the mouse hopefully um, and um, it'd be the lower points here and as you can see here in January the 29th it was uh, it was right up right up at the top here uh, 35 becquerels per meter squared now if I go back if I go back before January 29th no data can be found at this time okay why is that you may ask well with the hungry reactor I found in the past though and I'm going to link the uh, findings I had was that in the UK there was a uh, lead found in the water and it was above the limit it wasn't a huge amount but it was above the limit and it was supposed to be notified and people were supposed to be notified that there was X amount of lead in the water at least to stop their kids drinking it and things like this um, so but they didn't and uh, and in 2011 when this uh, hungry incident happened they basically turned around and uh, we saw we saw huge issues with the high levels of lead that were released as well there was a coincidence if you like uh, so I'm just showing you the German uh, PB was high at the end of January and before that the data uh, was switched off it's not available uh, you can draw your own conclusions on that so anyway I'm go this is going to be a fairly long <laughs> a fairly long video it's, um, but anyway so what we're looking at here is the data being switched off now let's see if the data was switched off in um, on others all right so okay we've got this here now of course germany itself does produce its own lead in the air and then there's uh, from poland they get uh, they get uh, lead from uh, you know sort of various processes uh, now so let's go back all right so we're now in january okay so we're getting sort of peaks regular peaks let's go back again and I would say that's getting lower that was down into November and then before that so we're seeing there's quite low values 12 but when we come up to date and go back one we're getting 24 we're getting double the value um, towards the end of January um, we're getting little peaks now as well and we know that the uh, 
things are switched off, the monitors are switched off. Okay, so the next little bit I want to bring you to, um, I've gone to uh, uh, Slovenia, we're measuring, I don't know if you can see it, but it's iodine 132, and we've got a zero measurement, okay? And I've just put the chart up here, which is zeros, I'll just bring that across, zero, 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 um, and then I'm gonna get rid of that. Now, it's only showing one that shows iodine 132 in Slovenia here. I'm gonna to go to iodine 131. And we'll see if any come up here. Normally we get some up in Finland, we get two in Slovenia. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so we've got a few here, all right? Now, if we go to this particular one, all right, we've got the Czech Republic and we've got a zero measurement. Okay, once again, uh, we go back a month and we've got a zero measurement, but in January the 15th, right, or will be January the 16th. It's very hard to tell because of the way they've done it. Uh, let's do it uh, one week at a time. All right, we'll go back. We'll go back. Okay, so they're not measuring any iodine from February the 6th. Okay, but let's go back a bit further. February the 6th. So January the 30th to January the 24th. The oh, hang on a minute. January the 30th. Hmm. No, there might be a gap there. But anyway, let's go back further. January the 16th. They've all got zero measurements. So Czech Republic, according to this, didn't measure anything. I'm not so sure that that is the case. This is another area. We've got an orange one here, or yellow, I should say. Okay, and here actually is very interesting. We can see it's switched off. You can see the gaps in the measurements, right? They're taking a measurement uh, midweek, every week or something, by the look of this, all right? Um, let's do polyline and you can see they do one measurement a day now they do actually have this live right and when we go to January you can see it's all been switched off there's one little measurement there but in the other sort of uh, weeks nothing and even in December as well okay so that's that's another issue there all right so how are we going to find the source because they're switching off on your dep to hide IAEA are switching off the map monitors, taking off the peaks, not reporting fully on your debt, which is the public map mapping system paid for by Europeans uh, to find out what's going on, used by the emergency services to find out where plumes come from and what have you, so that they can manage emergency situations better. Um, and I've shown on other videos how they've uh, uh, manipulated the system. Now, fortunately for us in France, there is actually this crowd, and there's also CREAD um, and what have you. So, if I take you here, this is a report I did for Nuclear Hot Seat. We're back here again. Now, what I did, I said here basically, uh, was that the Budapest medical isotope in Hungary in 2011 and 2012 had a big release now i said the 2011 one i was able to tie to lead in water and it was found in birds and this is all in the uk that i did my my research um, and uh, the uk government stopped reporting it uh, you know after 2010 was their last official report of levels of, of radiate of lead in water uh, and they stopped reporting it and, uh, and now they just say on their annual reports uh, yes, no, the, water, uh, the lead levels were okay. They don't give you the lead levels like they used to prior to 2000, uh, well, 2010 and before. Uh, they changed the format of the reporting and mainly because of this medical, Budapest Medical Isotope uh, Institute in Hungary. So uh, Fortunately for us, a crowd called CREAD, right, a French NGO, 
uh, who was set up after Chernobyl to measure uh, radioactivity, uh, managed to work out using using uh, the uh, uh, the UDEP uh, sort of map uh, where this radiation was coming from, and they found it in Budapest, and they measured iodine one two five and iodine 131 um, and especially several kilometers from the nuclear site itself there was heavy contamination okay now they warned the locals not to drink milk and leafy vegetables now the iodine 125 is fairly problematic because whereas the iodine 131 is quite short-lived iodine 125 in this situation was much longer lived now we never got reports tying in the lead right with this situation okay but they did report more than one I, I, I type of iodine now uh, the iodine 125 you can't find there's, there's no option for it on the UODEP mapping system that we were looking at now they did a report and what they were saying was that the this particular crowd and the nuclear lobby the nuclear industry generally in Hungary were hiding the releases so when these uh, all nuclear establishments have to report to the IAEA and say, well, look, you know, we had X amount of, um, you know, sort of uh, meters per cubed of release of this isotope or that isotope, you know, pollution, basically. And that is noted down and reported on and all the studies that the nuclear industry use are based off that. As I showed you there, where all the switch offs are, they're hiding peaks which would add to those becquerels per meter cube to the annual amount that's released and so basically we're seeing that that, that uh, Hungary were really bad because they were having a lot of extra releases that were went unreported um, the IAEA tried to cover that particular 2011 one up they were saying it was Fukushima it was Pakistan it was here it was there but in reality we did track it to uh, to Hungary uh, and the UADEP mapping system was uh, used to work much better to do this. We we actually tracked the levels of radiation back to Hungary, quite obviously. Now, Krirad have done it in this case, but they've managed to get it to uh, two countries. Um, so I think they were saying it was either Czechoslovakia or Hungary. But it, Hungary has uh, this this particular laboratory in uh, in oh, uh, not laboratory, but this particular. Uh, Medical Isotope Institute uh, is is known for making big releases and huge plumes that cover the whole of Europe, it, it, especially with iodines. You know, um, so anyway, we we went through it. I I was just in my report. I showed little plumes, uh, but I also linked, uh, reported on the German one. I reported that in Spain there was a bit of an issue there. Uh, you know, and put, you know the, the neighbouring countries will do switch offs. Uh, I also reported that the, the Flamanville uh, nuclear reactor that was um, had problems uh, the week or so ago, uh, that you know having lots of problems and switch offs and refuels going on over Europe, and uh, what's happening is is that uh, it's confusing everybody as to what's going on. But it's just if you're aware of these situations, you know, I, I did a report which showed that the wind gener uh, wind uh, directions from flam flammable would actually head towards Ireland um, now that that was uh, when that was actually happening it went across the Channel Island straight up to Ireland and it would hit Cork and in fact about a week or so later they obviously were doing some sort of release from that plant or a plant nearby and it reached Cork and it went from 0.1 microsieverts to 0.2 microsieverts now that's not big but it was reported but quite interesting enough last Sunday which would have been Sunday the 19th early in the morning I was looking at the uh, UADEP mapping and I realized that the Irish all the Irish monitors were switched off uh, now that was uh, that was just last Sunday now that could have been from Sellafield release it could have been from a French release uh, it could even be from a Spanish release because these radiation this radiation does travel okay but this was a separate issue you know and it could conf uh, confuse people if they don't aren't aware of that, that Spain has some really rancid uh, reactors 
um, and so does France, and so does the UK. They've got, you know, the France and the UK have uh, La Hague and Sellafield, which are nuclear reprocessing. They're often venting out uh, radiation, and they vent it out, if possible, not across the country, because they're on the eastern side of the country, you know, on the coast. They will actually <coughs> vent out when the wind's going out to sea, um, and possibly when it's stormy, so that the actual the whole thing will be uh, be mixed up. And of course, Ireland and Norway and Iceland, and, you know, and, uh, will will get hit, and it will come back into Europe as well, because generally you have circulatory uh, uh, weather patterns. They don't go in a straight line to America; they circle around, um, and they're hoping that by the time it gets to Norway, it will be quite low. Now you can see here the Norwegian monitor was switched off. This is the map from uh, Sunday morning I did. Um, so if it was Sellafield, the wind was going north, or if it was in France, the wind was going north, it would hit Ireland, it would hit Norway. There'd be little peaks, but they just hide those little peaks, partially so that you can't trace them where they're coming from, because I was doing that uh, uh, quite a while ago. Now, <clears throat> I mean, I did uh, NRPA also, you know, there was another issue there up in Norway, the why, they're, why they're so sensitive at switching off their monitors, because they're actually hiding their own nuclear disaster, or accident at least, where the, the thorium, the, uh, you know, the hope of the nuclear is the thorium reactor, and they have one working in Norway. It uh, produces uh, steam and it's used to, uh, in a paper factory, right? But uh, the main point of it is it's actually uh, an experimental thorium reactor, which is uh, what the uh, nuclear industry hoped to uh, develop. Uh, but this one, anyway, the fuel, uh, the actual fuel rods melted down in situ in October. Uh, they waited a while to report it because they do that so that you can't track the weather reports to see where these releases are coming from. So they have a, a general policy of delaying the report until the you know uh, for the latest amount. You know, a bit like TEPCO did in Fukushima, basically. So thorium reactors basically are uh, you know the the fuel melted down it started producing iodine 131 um, and they closed the building down vacated it and they've sealed it and they reckon that they're dealing with the iodine but there's been no more reports not to say well we've got it sorted out now we, we dealt with the fuel we've done this you know this is two months later or three months later really and uh, and and there's no report on the nrpa dot uh, no website the last one was november the 4th uh, i think vaguely so um so that's that's the issue there so I, i'm going to sort of leave it here now and uh, i just wanted to explain uh, to anybody who is interested what's going on in europe at the moment uh, all this nonsense about uh, russia um, is it, 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 russia does its own releases from its nuclear reactors as well but in this situation uh, we know where the actual radiation is coming from and if you notice read uh, some of the uh, articles that are put up by mainstream they do mention medical reactor as well as other sources but they do mention medical reactor and to be honest with you there is only one major medical reactor used in Europe and that is based in Hungary it's run by the IAEA uh, in terms of and, and it's protected by the IAEA who have access to the European radiation monitoring monitoring data there is no need whatsoever for an American plane to come over and check out where the radiation's coming from. They're doing that as an exercise because there's so much radionuclides in, in the European air at the moment in the last few weeks and probably planned that they're going to use that to, sh to uh, work out, you know, use the military systems to work out uh, with radiation plumes. It's an exercise. And of course, the papers have picked up on it and now they're saying, oh, it's Russia, it's Russia. No, it isn't. It's Hungary, it's the European medical. Uh, laboratory uh, and uh, medical uh, reactor that uh, where old people get their uh, uh, re uh, sort of medical uh, sort of isotopes from uh, it's under pressure to create certain isotopes they have to vent other isotopes uh, iodine 131 is one that they're throwing away and other ones like uh, iodine 135 was it let me have a look again uh, iodine, uh, yeah, 135, lead, all these, radon, all these, are, they don't want those, they want the various other isotopes uh, for various other medical procedures. 
um, and to create those they have to they create a lot of pollution basically um, now so and th this is a very old reactor in Hungary so it is very dirty and the people around there there is a health risk all right maybe not for the rest of Europe but there is a health risk for them and that's it thank you